Right now, hundreds of miles above Earth sits the International Space Station. And on board, there's an astronaut with a special connection to Pittsburgh. Dr. Woody Hoberg, who actually graduated from the North Allegheny School District, was chosen for the NASA SpaceX mission, the rocket taking off for space back in March. We actually got the opportunity to connect with him while at the space station, learning more about his life and his work. Take a look. This is so cool. Station, this is Heather Abraham with KDKA. How do you hear me? Heather, this is Woody Hoberg. I have you loud and clear. This is cool. This is so, I mean, cooler for you because you're actually in space. Yeah, it's great to be here, Heather, and an honor to get to talk with you. Uh, welcome on behalf of the Expedition 69 crew. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. So is this a dream come true for you, Woody? This is definitely a dream come true for me. Like, like I think many children, uh, when I was growing up, being an astronaut sounded like just the coolest job in the world. Honestly, I never thought it was actually possible. Uh, and it wasn't really until I was, uh, honestly, until I got the call telling me I had actually been selected that I actually believed that it was possible to get this job. But it's absolutely a, a dream come true. So do you, are you missing home? Are you missing Pittsburgh? Because I can tell you it's just another cloudy, rainy day here. That's funny. I actually noticed this morning that we were flying directly over Pittsburgh, and I thought I would go outside and get some uh, photos of, of Pittsburgh as we flew over. And like you say, it was uh, completely socked in with clouds. But I will say, I, I definitely, um, it's an honor to be up here, and I, I'm just loving my time on board. Couldn't be happier. But I also, every time I look back at Earth, I think, wow, it's, that's a special place that I look forward to returning to. Um, when you say that you are going to go outside to take pictures, what does that mean when you're an astronaut? Well, I may have, uh, I think what I meant is look outside. So uh, okay. <laughs> typically, uh, when we, when we want to photograph Earth, we have a couple windows, actually, that are, that are great for um, Earth observations. We have the cupola, which provides a sort of panoramic view of, of Earth. It's really incredible to spend time in there. And then we also have an Earth viewing window uh, looking straight down in the U.S. laboratory. And that's a higher quality, like, photo grade window that's uh, great for taking photos. We actually use that for... Um, some science missions involving photography and also for uh, occasionally there are international disaster charter sites so for example if there's a hurricane somewhere on earth we're sometimes some of the uh, first photos that can get taken are astronauts on the space station just pointing a camera at what's going on it's wonderful um, is there anything that you're missing from back home oh look at the microphone just floating <laughs> i miss showers <laughs> I'm a mom to three, so I miss showers too, Woody. <laughs> um, all of your experience, I watched this wonderful video that NASA put together of you, um, and it included an interview with you too, of your experience leading up to this moment, um, from childhood up until the point that you left. Um, what do you think about the preparation that went into this and, and kind of like your lifelong buildup to get to where you are? Yeah, look, I've had this discussion a lot with my classmates, classmates and colleagues in the astronaut office and at NASA, and I think a common thread for everyone is the realization that the careers we were all pursuing prior to becoming astronauts were ones that we were just incredibly passionate about and that uh, we, we actually didn't know in the moment that that was a pathway to becoming an astronaut. So the, the sort of wi wandering road that I've taken professionally, um, everything from engineering to flying airplanes to search and rescue, um, all of that was just pursuing passions. And, and I didn't, there's no right way to become an astronaut. And it was only in hindsight when I was applying and, and going through the process to get the job that I realized that my background was actually well suited um, for, for being an astronaut. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I watched that video, I mean, not many people can say that when they were kids, they were building rockets. Um, and even being part of the search and rescue team at Yosemite, I mean, getting lost in the wilderness is kind of like being up in space. You're just kind of out there and, and searching for the next frontier. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some of those early memories building rockets were right there in Pittsburgh uh, with an organization called Tripoli Pittsburgh. It's an amateur rocketry group. Uh, I, I'm indebted to them for um, just kind of molding me, honestly, as an engineer in my early years. And then later on, yeah, I think I've always found that I'm really passionate about technical things like engineering, but then also operational things. And that's what drove me to get involved in search and rescue and flying. And I think that's a common thread in human space flight. You know, we do really technical stuff up here on the space station, but we also have to make stuff happen every day operationally. And the team in Mission Control helps us do that every day. And for people that kind of enjoy both aspects of that, this is, uh, this is a really special place. I have a really random question if it's allowed. Is it cold? I actually, I've heard some people feel cold. Um, different parts of the space station are slightly colder than others. And actually, the place that I um, shower after my workouts is one of the cold places. So that, <laughs> that's always entertaining. Um, but honestly, it's, it's a, on average, it's like a balmy 72 degrees anywhere you go on the space station uh, every day of the year. So uh, speaking of the space station, what are you doing there? What is your goal? What is your mission while you're there? Well, big picture, we are, I'm really honored to be carrying on uh, the incredible more than 22 year legacy of continued continuous human presence on board the space station. So that's just amazing. In the last more than 22 years, there has not been a moment when we don't have humans on board the ISS living and working. And that's exactly what we're continuing to do as part of Expedition 69. Uh, we've been busy. We just sent home a uh, SpaceX cargo vehicle, the SpaceX 27 mission, full of science results that we spent about the last month working on. And now we're gearing up for uh, the first EVA in our increment. So we're gonna um, gear up to send my colleagues Steve Bowen and Sultan al Nayadi outside the space station to do some repair work, and that'll be uh, next week. So we're, we're always busy um, doing a number of different things out here. That's wild. I couldn't imagine doing repair work outside in space floating out there. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to disclose, but when do you come back home? Well, right now we're targeting somewhere around uh, late August. We're always prepared for these dates to change. Uh, it could be earlier, could be later, uh, but somewhere around late summer, early fall is the target right now. Have you heard from North Allegheny? I, they must be so proud that you're a graduate from their school. Yeah, I'm so lucky that I got to uh, attend such a wonderful public school, um, you know, all through high school. Uh, North Allegheny was, was a really positive uh, portion of my early development. And uh, I am hoping to get to talk with the students there a little bit later uh, this spring. I also have a, a brother. Uh, my brother Russ teaches high school chemistry, 10th grade chemistry at Upper St. Clair. Uh, so I'm hoping to maybe talk with his school as well at some point this spring. Well, I hope you can visit us at KDKA when you're uh, back here on Earth and showered. I know that'll be one of the first things you do. That would and be best you. for both of us, and I would absolutely <laughs> right. love that. I would uh, love to come visit sometime. Thank you so much, Woody, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Heather. It was great speaking with you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event. It was such a neat experience just to know that he was all the way up in space. We were down here, and just think about that. As you're sitting here watching TV, imagine not taking a proper shower for all of those months. So that's what he's looking forward to most when he comes back. And we certainly hope that he will visit us here on Talk Pittsburgh when he returns.